Thank you for stopping by the channel. Let's discuss light switches, three-way switches in particular. This video will cover three-way switch theory and application, proper and improper wiring, troubleshooting, and proper installation. If you are interested in do-it-yourself projects or making some interesting renovations in your home, especially during these stay-at-home times, feel free to subscribe to the channel to be notified when I post other videos that can help you tackle the next project. Follow me in as we go on the journey of learning or refreshing your knowledge on the three-way switches. Let's get the safety warning out of the way. Basically, please be safe, especially while working with electricity. Always disconnect the power at the circuit breaker prior to starting any electrical work on that circuit. If you don't fully understand the project you're doing, please research it more or consult a professional. Don't get hurt. First, let's understand how a three-way switch wiring functions, and then we will move on to the operation of the switch itself. There are three wires coming out of the circuit breaker panel, making this magic happen. The power carrying hot wire comes out of the circuit breaker. It first leads into the main switch box and gets connected to the common terminal of the switch. Travel terminals one and two on the main switch get connected to the corresponding travel terminals on the secondary switch via traveler wires. From the secondary switch's common terminal, the line continues as a load wire to the light fixture or a fan. Now we lead a neutral wire coming out of the circuit breaker. First, it comes in into the main switch electrical box, where it gets tied off with a wire nut. Then it gets extended into the secondary switch box, where it also gets tied off with a wire nut. In both cases, the wires have a connection in the box, but are not connected into the switches. Coming out of the secondary light switch box, the neutral wire is traveling all the way into the light fixture. When the ground wire is coming out of the circuit breaker, it also leads into the main electrical box, where it gets connected to the main light switch. Then ground gets extended into the electrical box of the secondary light switch, where it also gets connected to the switch's green screw connection. The third connection to the ground wire leads all the way to the light fixture. As we power on the circuit, the power travels to our main power switch. With this theory a reminder, let's move on to the actual switches. Let's compare the basic two-way switch and a three-way switch. In a single pole switch, the power can travel in one possible way depending on the wiring. Once you connect the hot and the load wires, the switch either turns the power on or off. After you power on the switch from the circuit breaker and the toggle is in an off position, the light is off. But once you flip the toggle up, you connect the electricity and now it's flowing through to the light fixture. Two-way switches are truly reversible. No matter which terminal you wire the hot or load to, it will still function the same way because it can still close the loop only in one direction. Now let's discuss three-way switches and how they are different. Three-way switches always function in pairs. One of the two is always under load no matter what position it is in. When the switch is flipped down, it is powering the lower traveler wire. In the up position, it is sending power to the upper traveler. Here is a representation of two switches side by side, showing all of the connection terminals. Let's see what is required in order to power on our light fixture. The green screw is always the ground. The brass screws are for the traveler terminals, terminal 1 and terminal 2. These get connected to their counterpart terminals on the opposing switch, terminal 1 connecting to terminal 1 and terminal 2 connecting to terminal 2. The whole trick of a three-way switch is in the common terminal connection. In the single pole two-way switch, this black screw normally gets connected to the hot wire from the circuit breaker. The three-way switch setup differs from this in the fact that on one of the switches, the black common screw connection connects to the hot wire, while the black screw on the opposing switch gets connected to the load wire leading into the light fixture or a fan. Properly wired three-way switch will provide power whenever the rockers or toggles are in the same position on both sides. In this example, whenever the rockers or toggles are up, the power is going over the top travelers. If you flip both switches down, now you're powering the lower set of traveler terminals. Whenever you mismatch the toggles, the electricity does not have a clear way to travel and the light does not turn on. 
By breaking the chain, you're depriving the light fixture of electricity. Let's get back to the wiring diagram and see how the light switches behave in a proper installation. If we flip the main switch up, we're sharing electricity between Traveler Terminals 1 on both switches. In this configuration, the light is on when both of the switches are in the up position. If we flip down the secondary switch, we're breaking the chain yet again. As you can see, the three-way switch must be wired this way to ensure consistent performance. Your key issue here is finding the proper hot wire since there are two switches and only one of them will be hot. The secondary switch will have two pseudo hot wires which are energized only when the main switch itself is connected to power and it changes the position based on whichever traveler is being engaged. When you're approaching electrical wiring, you should be able to tell the wires apart and understand what they do. Unplugging one switch and plugging in another in the same exact way doesn't always work. The same thing goes for switching light fixtures, but that's a discussion for another video. Let's identify the wires. You can be pretty safe to assume that the copper wire coming out of the electrical switch box is going to be ground, but the rest of the wires are really all in question. Now that you know the proper way to wire a three-way switch, let's take a look at what happens when three-way switches are improperly wired. This can help you with identifying and troubleshooting a misbehaving three-way switch. So let's jump in in examples of what not to do. As a reminder, here's how the switches work when they connect the contacts. Here is a three-way switch wiring example where some of the wires are connected wrong, but it will still function, sort of. Ground is connected as usual to the green screw. On the main switch, hot from the circuit breaker is connected to the travel terminal one, which now you know is wrong. Load lead to the light fixture is connected to the common terminal on the secondary switch, which is correct. Both travel terminals two are connected properly. Travel terminal one on the secondary switch is mistakenly connected to the common terminal of the main switch. I will give you a few seconds to digest this information, then we'll move forward with the animations. Our power is coming in on the travel terminal one on the main switch. If we recall the positioning of the switches inside the light switch, the connection can be made only in one of two ways. If the main light switch is flipped down, there is no power connecting the second switch. If we flip the main switch up, now we're sending power to the secondary light switch. If the secondary light switch also happens to be in the upper position, then the light fixture gets power. If the second light switch happens to be in the down position, then the light fixture will not get any power, even though the switch does have power coming to it. As you can see, the wiring will work and the switch will visually function at the initial test if the main switch is in that one perfect position. And it's working. Now we'll make sure that the other side is working too. Let's change a variable and flip the main switch down. Now the secondary switch does not have any power coming in on any of its terminals. It's completely isolated and no matter how you flip it, nothing will happen. Let's discuss a second scenario of incorrect wiring of a three-way switch. A hot lead from a circuit breaker is improperly connected to travel to terminal 2 on the main switch. The light fixture load wire is properly connected to the common terminal on the secondary switch. Travel terminals 1 on both switches are properly connected to each other. Common terminal of the main switch is connected to travel terminal 2 of the secondary switch. Let's see how the power circuit will behave in this kind of wiring situation. Let's power on the circuit. If the main switch is flipped up, it completely isolates the circuit and does not allow power to get in at all. The whole circuit becomes immobile. So let's disregard this positioning. But if we flip it down, now things are starting to happen. Now we have electricity traveling from switch one to switch two. If the secondary light switch happens to be in the lower position, then we're getting power and now our light fixture is working. If we flip the secondary switch up, we're using a circuit that is completely empty of any power and cannot have any power. If the switches are not both in down position, this light will not work. 
Enough of theory, let's move on to practice and start messing with live electrical switches. The main question we want to answer at this stage is, which one of our switches is the main one that contains the hot power coming from the circuit breaker? Once we identify that one wire, everything else will start falling into place. But you want to make sure and take your time and do identify that one wire. I will be using a multimeter to make this job even simpler and easier. A quick second reminder, don't forget to disconnect the power at the circuit breaker prior to any work with exposed electrical wiring. Let's replace this switch. Here is a now familiar to us three-way switch. Using our current knowledge, we can assume the following. A copper wire is definitely ground. The other three wires are in question. The wire connected to the common screw most likely is either a hot wire or a load leading into the light fixture. The red wire most likely is one of the travelers. But let's assume that it is not color-coded and they are all of the same color. To be sure, we need to take out both of the light switches from the electrical boxes. The second light switch has been removed from the wall and it is connected only by the ground wire. The rest of the wires are spidered out so none of the ends are touching each other. Now we power on the circuit breakers. From this point on be very careful because you will be going between live wires and non-powered wires. Both of the three-way switches are out of the electrical boxes with all of the wiring exposed. One of these switches will be under power while the other switch will not have any power coming to it but you must treat both of them as equally dangerous and approach with caution. I have seen people getting electrocuted and it was not pretty. I am doing all of this testing with a multimeter. It is really a must have tool if you're planning to deal with electricity at all. I own two of them as you can see and I will put up a few links in the description below to some of these. Really, if you are dealing with electricity, you should use a multimeter. If you can't afford one, go ask your friends or your neighbors if they have them, they will happily let you borrow it because they can be possibly saving your life. It's a $15 investment that will last you a lifetime. If you are enjoying this video and are finding it useful, please hit a like. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified when new videos get posted. And back to action. Turn on the multimeter. So now I touch ground. We see that this is indeed a hot because if I'm still keeping on the same ground and I'm touching any other wire, I'm not getting any reading. I come back again to the hot, and there we go. When we perform the same exact test on a secondary switch, we should get zero readings from any possible combination of wires. That is because we already found the hot connection on the other side. And in a three-way switch, as you recall, there is only one always-on switch. It could happen in reverse, where the first switch you tested is the dead one, so testing both ends under load is very important. If during the testing you discover that both switches have hot wires, you are not dealing with a three-way switch wiring, maybe more than two switches are involved in the sliding setup and you need to investigate. You are pulling out a wrong switch. Check if there are other switches around you that can be controlling the same light fixture. Again, if something looks like you don't really understand what you're doing, stay safe, call a professional. Now we have identified one true hot wire that is coming into this whole circuit. This gives us three wires that we can identify now. Five to go. Let's assume that the rest of the wires are not color-coded and we don't know what ends with what. Next step is to turn off the power to the circuit at the circuit breaker. Now we can wire up our main switch. Whenever we're wiring the main switch, we connect our real hot to the black common terminal screw on the switch. The other two wires, which are the two travelers, you can connect them in any combination to the available travel terminals. It does not matter at this point because we will identify them on the other end in the next step. We take our identified hot wire and connect it to the black common terminal on the switch. Then we take two remaining wires and connect one into the travel terminal one and the other into the travel terminal two. 
tuck the switch inside the electrical box and put the screws to secure it in place. With the main switch installed, we're going back to our circuit breaker and turning the power back on because we need the circuit to be live so we can figure out the corresponding wires to the ones we just connected on the main switch side. We pick one direction of the main switch rocker. Let's set it to up so we're sending power to the upper travel terminal, the terminal 1. This way we're looking to find the hot side on the secondary switch. The hot wire on the secondary switch will be our terminal 1 travel wire. There we go, we have a winner. Now we've flipped the main switch down so we can establish where is the position of our travel wire number 2. Again, we test all of the wires coming out of the switch box against the ground wire until we find it. And here's our wire to connect to travel terminal number 2. The remaining wire, the lone survivor of our testing, where it was not clearly identified as traveler number 1 or traveler number 2, is the load, which gets connected to the light fixture via the common terminal on the secondary switch. Let's properly wire up the switch. If your switch has wire guiding grooves, make sure to align the wires with these channels so they sit in there securely. Wrap the wire around the screw in clockwise direction so it self tightens even more after you tighten the screw. And connect the load wire. Moving on to the other side. Now we connect the ground wire. You can always use pliers in helping you achieve the best fit. Connect the travel terminal number 2, then we tighten the screws for both of the wires on this side of the switch. Do all of the live testing before fully securing and covering the switch. This way if something is not working, there is not much to take apart. Just don't stick anything inside the open electrical switch box and touch anything inside it while it's under load. For the sake of this video, the switches are already installed. The main switch is in a down position, so this switch interrupts power when it flips up. If the main switch is up, the power will flow through the secondary switch once we push it up. And we're done. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial at least as much as I enjoyed making it. I actually deleted the first version after uploading it because I felt I could make it a little bit more fun and educational. I hope you learned something new and now can safely tackle your next three-way switch project. If you did, please give this video a like. If you hit subscribe, you'll be notified when my new videos come out. If you have any comments or ideas, please post them in the comment section. I'll be glad to discuss any DIY project. It's been fun hanging out with you, but our time has come to an end. I'll see you guys in the next video.